So hello and welcome to another tutorial. Hopefully this one will be a really quick one. Basically what we're going to do is this. Very simple pop up and disappear sort of logo thing. So the first thing we're going to need is a fusion composition. So to find that, if you come to the top of the screen, you've got effects library. If it's not turned on, then click effects library, come down to effects, and here's your fusion composition, which you can drag onto your timeline. We're going to adjust the length of this down to about four seconds. Uh, you can drag it manually like this or if you'd rather you can right click and choose change clip duration and if you double click where it says 04 you can type in whatever number of seconds you want there okay fusion into fusion make sure your playheads over your fusion composition and click the fusion button and you're in fusion Drag your media out, down out of the way, and bring a background. God, I can't speak, sorry. Bring your background in and make it transparent. All this does is it sets your fusion comp to conform to the resolution of your timeline. So anything you drag onto this now will be proportionate to the timeline and will size appropriately. So the first thing we need is our logo. To get our logo, I'm going to use a loader node. So shift space bar and type loader. And your loader node appears and opens this dialog box looking for what file you want to use. So search for your logo, click open, and your logo is now in Fusion. Okay, so we've got our logo here. What we need to do is get it to come up on this screen which is our media out screen to do that click and hold the output from your loader and drag it onto the output of your background this automatically creates a merge and we can now see our logo in our output screen at the minute it's in the middle of the screen which isn't where we want it and we're also going to want to animate it so to do that we're going to use a transform node so select your loader make sure it's highlighted in red and then come to this bar here and in the middle you'll find transform click on transform and it will drop it into your timeline so first thing with our transform node make sure it's selected outlined in red and you can see the control handles on your screen here. Grab the middle and put your logo where you want it. Cool. Now we're going to animate our logo. So we need to come back, get your playhead and take it right back to frame zero. You can double click, double check you're on frame zero here. And we're going to change the size of our logo. So we have our size here. We're going to click on this little diamond and turn it red to say that we've set a keyframe and we're going to drop the size down to zero. We're going to come forward to frame six and we're going to click the little diamond again to set another keyframe. Don't change the size at this point. We'll come forward to frame 18. We will set another keyframe and this time we're going to click on the little dot here and that brings it up to a its normal size. We're going to go forward another six frames to frame 24 and we're going to set another keyframe but not do anything with the size. So what we now have is our logo appearing. Quite boring so we're going to improve that a bit. To improve it we're going to use the spline editor you can find your spline editor on the top right of your screen. If you click on spline, this window opens and this is your spline editor. Drag it out a bit so you've got some room and you'll notice that the 
transform node is already in your spline editor. It's the only node in this example that's got any animation on it, so that's the only one that appears. Just click in the box next to transform and you'll see that it activates the size parameter, which is where our keyframes are. Now, on this occasion, it's chucked everything into the window nicely, but quite often it doesn't. If your playhead had been somewhere over here, you wouldn't have had that. So what you would do is come to this little button here that says zoom to fit, press it, and it does exactly that. It zooms all the keyframes into the window. So the ones we're interested in are these two here. And we're going to click and drag around both and select them. I'm going to press Shift S to add ease in and ease out. Now, what we're also going to do is we're going to fiddle around with this bit up here. So this line here is your tangent for your curve and you can grab either handle and you can adjust it. So what we're going to do is grab the right hand and handle and just pull it down. Now we can also increase this one, but we want to increase it so that we've got a fair old bounce. Now if you play through and watch your animation, it pops up and bounces a bit. Just makes it feel a little bit nicer and less boring. Finally what we need to do is get rid of it. So we're going to come to the end of our animation, we're going to come back roughly 24 frames, which for me is, is a second. Obviously it depends what your timeline settings are, but mine's at 24 frames a second. So we'll come back to frame 76, we'll come back to our size, and we'll just set another keyframe. You don't need to change anything at this point. So basically everything between frame 24 and frame 76 will stay at normal size. If you then come forward 18 frames, so to 92, you can drag your, your size down to zero. It automatically sets another keyframe for you. And if you look in your spline editor, you've got your two keyframes here. Again, click, drag, select both keyframes, and press Shift and S, and you'll get the easing on your disappearance. And that's pretty much it. So it pops up and then nicely fades away. So we can close our spline editor. We can come back into our edit screen. You can see the blue bar start to appear as resolve caches, the fusion clip. And now we can play it. And that's pretty much it. I hope you found it useful or entertaining or both. Please feel free to subscribe, hit the like button and hit the bell notification and I will catch you on the next one. Cheers.